This morning's PT is a trail run, which we haven't done since being in Korea. But in this video, I want to talk about my transition from ROTC life to active duty military life as an infantry platoon leader because my expectations, my fears, what to expect were so different in ROTC than they are right now. So I thought this video could just help some people out as they go through the process of transitioning and commissioning into the military. <laughs> So a pretty common question I get is how to best prepare for ROTC or the military. And my one instructor in ROTC put it the best way that I could really describe it is they give you the answers to the test. So like in the army, for example, you know you need to be able to run two miles in a certain amount of time, do two minutes of push-ups and two minutes of sit-ups. And the standards can be found online. You have the answers, just work towards those answers and set goals. Now, when I was in ROTC preparing to be a platoon leader, there weren't many resources that I really found that best describe like your true duties and responsibilities. There is one resource, it's platoonleader.army.mil. I believe you need like certificates and an account to actually access that, but it's a forum where other platoon leaders will put products, their experiences, examples, lessons learned. It's a really good resource. So I'm about to hit the gym, going to work, and then I'll wrap up this video. So I just got off work a little bit ago. The closer we get to leaving now here, the harder it is to film during the day. So most of the, the videos that I do during the week, Monday through Friday, either have to be done in the morning before going into work at 9.30 or in the evening after 17, 1800. So for those of you that have been watching this channel for some time now, know that my commissioning source was ROTC. So my senior year of high school, I applied for the Army ROTC National Scholarship. I was awarded that, that paid for my tuition in college. And then I had an eight year military obligation after graduating and commissioning. And then four of those years were active duty. Now, like the longer I was in ROTC, the more nervous I became to be an actual Lieutenant and, and platoon leader. Cause I realized that ROTC was not like a clear depiction of what the actual army was like. Like there's really no rank structure within ROTC. Everyone's kind of like on a buddy, buddy basis. Your instructors or your mentors and cadre, they're active duty military. But at the same time, it's not the same relationship you have like as private first class and specialist and platoon sergeant or platoon leader and company commander. I don't wanna say it's like a buddy-buddy relationship, but it's, it's very informal. What intimidated me the most is that I knew and understood that I had no clue or idea of the job that I was expected to perform and do. So I knew nothing about the infantry or the army. And when I was awarded the branch of infantry, I think that scared me a little bit more because there were two things that I didn't have that the people I was supposed to be leading did have. One, experience, years in service. Two, combat experience and multiple deployments on me. So the guys that I was in charge of and leading had upwards of 20 years in the military. And that scared the absolute shit out of me. If it didn't scare you or doesn't scare you, I don't know, how, I don't know, it just blows my mind. Now ROTC isn't gonna teach you everything you need to know in order to be a good leader or a good platoon leader. It gives you a basic understanding of military structure, organization, customs and courtesies, drill and ceremony, essentially the things you're gonna learn at basic training. And it prepares you for your next level of military education, which will be your basic officer leader course. And like in my opinion, there's no way to teach leadership from a book or in a classroom, but it's something you're gonna learn from experience. So like myself, an LT commissioning three years ago is a completely different lieutenant today based off of just being a PL for two years, things I've experienced and learned, um, things I've learned from senior non-commissioned officers, especially like my platoon sergeant, you just change. Your, your methods of leadership change. You learn what works and what doesn't work. It just can't be taught in a classroom. Can I get an iced Americano, please? Okay. Size is a regular size. Oh, regular, please. Yeah, done that. Yeah. So after graduating college and commissioning, I went to Fort Benning, Georgia for the Infantry Officer Basic course, which is iBullock, and then Ranger School. After finishing both of these courses, 
I wasn't as intimidated to go to my first unit, which was Fort Hood, Texas. Reason being, like Eyebolt gives you a better understanding of what your actual job is supposed to be as a platoon leader. You get more familiarization with weapon systems and tactics and operation orders. But Ranger School was that big like pat on the back because it was something that was held above your head for so long being an infantry officer. And then after commissioning, you're expected to go to Benning and then leave Benning with your tab. Everyone tells you don't leave Fort Benning without that tab. During Ranger School, I recycled Darby phase for a six week holdover because of the best ranger competition. During the six weeks, I was doing like details and stuff, but I was working pretty closely with like E5s, E6s, E7s, and actually one E8. So a lot of NCOs and senior NCOs that could give me a better understanding of what they expected out of a, a platoon leader and what I should expect at my first duty assignment. So after like finishing ranger school and talking to so many NCOs and getting a better understanding of what I was supposed to do, I wasn't as scared shitless. And one of the best tips I was given from one of the Ranger Recycles, who was an NCO, was just don't be a douche. And one of the biggest takeaways since being a PL is that it's been such a humbling experience because you realize how much you don't know, how much you need to learn, and how much you need to heavily rely on your NCOs, your squad leaders, your team leaders, your platoon sergeant within the platoon. They run the platoon, they make things happen. You just help facilitate that. Now by the time I actually got to my first duty assignment and I moved down to the company to be put in a platoon and take over that platoon, I'll just kind of play it out and, and paint a picture of what happened. So I walk into the company and the company commander moves me to my platoon, that office, and uh, I start like talking to the PL. And the platoon sergeant at the time was an E6, so I still talk to really good friends. Um, all the squad leaders, the section leaders, they bring me to the office, they sit me down, and like, they're all just surrounding me. It was, it was like an intervention. Um, they wanted to know what I like doing, my pass, it was like a tab check. They wanted to make sure I had my Ranger tab because it is an infantry unit. Hey, friend, dude! What's up? <laughs> <laughs> this happens quite frequently here in Korea, like almost every video. Where was I? So it was like an interview from all the NCOs in the platoon to see what kind of person I was like. Now, one thing that will give you either a bad or a good perception right off the bat is your physical fitness, so your PT. If you can run, if you can do push-ups, if you can do sit-ups, if you look like you work out, if you do work out, in the infantry and in combat arms branches, this is just held to a very high standard. Perception is reality. How are you doing? Camp Casey, please. The days are definitely becoming shorter here in Korea. So like it's getting dark right now. 6.30 p.m. It's starting to get dark already. But the thing that cannot be more true that I heard before I even joined the army is that you learn your job at your job. So like I didn't learn being a PL in ROTC, and I've said this before, I didn't learn it at iBullock, I didn't learn it at Ranger School. I learned how to be a PL when I was a PL. And that can be any further from the truth. You learn from good leaders, you learn from bad leaders. I mean, I've learned more from bad leaders than good leaders, what to do and what not to do. I've learned from all the field training exercises, from working with the NCOs in my platoon, in my company. I've learned the most from my platoon sergeant, who has definitely squared me away more times than none. Even though I'd never planned on making the military a career, being a platoon leader has been the most rewarding job that I have ever done and probably will ever do. It's different from any job you can do right out of college and have that much responsibility. So the reason I wanted to do this video is because I did one titled The Day in the Life of an Infantry Platoon Leader a few months back and it got really good feedback. So I thought I'd go more into an in-depth like review of going from ROTC to active duty. Now I'm going to leave you with three tips that I've kind of picked up on while being a PL based off of like my perspective, talking to the guys in my platoon, other PLs and platoon leaders. This is just from my perspective. Number one is always go to bat for your guys. So don't become a yes man volunteering them for every little thing. This goes a long, long way. And I think honestly because I never planned on making a career and I was only gonna do my four years and then move on to something else, that it kind of gave me an advantage. I wasn't trying to pad my OER or my evaluations like you'll see some officers do. I thought I would always make the best decision for my platoon, the guys in my platoon, and it really went a far way. Number two is always make things make sense. And if you're in the military already, you 
know exactly what I'm talking about. If something doesn't make sense or the reasoning behind it, question it, get more information, and make sure it makes sense to the guys in the platoon before they have to execute. And number three, which is probably the most important to me, the one I've gotten the most feedback on from my guys, I was just having a conversation with my RTO about this the other day, is be able to talk to the guys in your platoon on a personal level. So like from private first class to sergeant first class, be able to sit in a room and have a conversation where it's not a clear distinction between PL and private. That's just from my perspective and the way I like to run the platoon and my leadership style. It helps build morale and esprit de corps and just camaraderie within the unit. And that's just things that I've found. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Let me know if you did. Like, subscribe if you are new, and I will talk to you in the next video.